it, it wasn't too hard, but how hard was it to turn the attention code from what happened the other night to Kentucky for the ball? Well, it is, and again, I, we're proud of what these guys have accomplished up to this point, but we know that there's another game Saturday, and it's a, it's a big game, it's the last one of the year, and certainly senior night for some special guys here, but uh, it's a mindset, we keep talking about that, and we know that uh, great respect for Kentucky, and that I think they're the most explosive offensive team in the country, and John does what he always does, he gets his guys playing great basketball at the end of the year, and they just keep building, and uh, they've uh, been on a little bit of a roll themselves, so again, I don't, it doesn't take much to get our guys' attention because of the respect that uh, they have for Kentucky and their program, and so uh, we know that we're going to have to be ready to play. But how different are they, if any, from that first meeting up there at Ruff? Well, they got, you know, Justin Edwards has become more of a part of it, you know, uh, DJ Wagner did, did play up there, and so they've got different guys, and, and uh, I think they've all improved. I mean, we saw what uh, Rob Dillingham did against us, but uh, Reed Shepard, those guys are all improved. And we've got a lot of guys that can make difficult shots and go get their own shots. And, uh, but uh, again, uh, it's what John does. His teams always get better. They always do. And he, and he had a lot of young guys work into it. And he's done exactly what all of us that know him would expect him to do. Coach James and Mescovy have been here five years. So you know how special they are in the program more than I do, but if you could put into words, you know, what they really meant to this program over the five years they've been here. Well, I can't put it into words because uh, we'd be here all night about, because I could talk about each one of them for hours on hours because uh, from the time they got here and we were really in a transition period and those guys were young and growing up, but uh, they, they're the ones that over the last, they, they've been the rock, both of them, and he throws a guy coming in and you add Dalton to this group, but uh, Josiah and Santi, I mean, they've been, they've been the rock. They've been the foundation. They've been the ones that have, uh, they, they know us. Uh, they know the coaches better than anybody. They know our standard. They know everything that we want done here. And so they're a, a voice not only to their teammates, but a voice that uh, from a coach's staff standpoint that we listen to. Coach, kind of in, in that same vein, you talk about culture a lot here, and you talk about those two guys. You know, being about it. What's it mean to the program that a guy like Grant Williams in the middle of this NBA season takes a he has a night off, he drives down to Columbia to be with you all? Well, you know, everybody in sports talks about a culture, and everybody has a culture. I, I don't care if they use that term or not. Uh, everybody has something and, and whatever word they want to put on it. But uh, the fact that Grant, uh, you know, it's, it's it's neat having him back in Charlotte. I, you know, I got to spend some really good time with him after the game in uh, Columbia, but. Uh, I, I do think it speaks volumes about his love for this university and, uh, and obviously the basketball program here. And and, I, and I, that's the things that you would expect years going on forward that Santi and Josiah would do because uh, they both have, could have left for any way they wanted to leave, and, and, uh, but they didn't. They, they decided uh, last year, both of them, you know, they went through the process they needed to, but uh, they told us from the beginning that where their heart was. Uh, late and they wanted to go explore, but we felt they were coming back. And uh, thankful that they did because they're, they, again, for five years, I mean, uh, I'm going to miss them in ways that, again, I could talk hours about it, but, uh, but with what Grant did, I think, speaks volumes for what's happened in, in our time here. And I'm thankful and blessed that we've got, been able to coach a group of guys uh, over these nine years that uh, care a lot about this university. What impression has Dalton left on you this season? His humility, uh, you know, when he came in, you know, he never once talked about coming in thinking he was going to be the leading scorer, want to do this or do that. He, he simply said from the beginning, I want to be in a winning program. I'd like to have a chance to play in the NCAA tournament and uh, I want to be part of a, a good program and, and uh, I want to be coached hard. And, uh, and I think the fact that you talk about he, I think you talk about Santi, Joe, and Dalton, the word that comes to mind is humility. I, I don't think those guys have a false sense of uh, security in terms of who they are, how they got to act. I, I think they go about the way they go about their business every day. Uh, I, I did an interview this morning with a uh, radio interview, and I made a comment. I guarantee you when I walk in today before practice, Josiah will be out on the court and he's out there. And you, you just get to know these guys and, and the way they go about their business. And I said before, I've walked out of here many nights late, and Dalton in there shooting, and I'm I like.
make sure you're taking care of your body. He said, I'll be in the ice bath tonight, I promise. And uh, Santi the same way. It's just that you spend so much time with these guys, you get to know them. And, uh, if anybody deserves to have two senior days, I would say it's probably Josiah and Santi. What's to say about Santi that he's embraced a role this season where he's not shooting as much as he did the last few years? Well, that's it, he's all about winning. Uh, I mean, nobody leads the country in more winning plays that go unnoticed than Santi. And, but uh, Santi's a very unselfish player. I mean, he, he understands who he is, what he needs to do. And, but uh, uh, again, from the time uh, we started recruiting, uh, really Justin first, and, and then Dalton, we knew we needed to add some offense to us, and uh, those guys knew it too. And, and they're really part of the reason uh, those guys are here because Santi and Joe, are, they've gone out of the way to make sure that everybody comes in here that the guys that we want, they make sure that they want them part of the team and the way they do their deal with them. Uh, I think people leave being impressed with Joe and Santi and the way they handled everything in the recruiting process. But uh, it's just humility and, and those guys that, and Santi is an example of that. What's been your favorite story or memory of Dalton this season? Obviously, you want favorite ones in the future, but so far. Well, uh, again, today someone asked me about him, and you know, and I, you know, we go through preseason, and you guys watch a lot of it and see it, and and I don't think any of you guys thought he was going to what he did either. And I think the biggest moment was uh, I said it after the exhibition game against Michigan State. One, he played harder than he had ever played in practice defensively, and. And then when he uh, made that dunk, I'm like, whoa. Because <laughs> I hadn't seen that either. You know, I've seen him do some things. But uh, and then uh, certainly hearing about the guys in the summer, he and Jemai going at it. And, but uh, I mean, there's a lot of things he's done. But uh, I hope he's got a lot more left in the bag as we head down the stretch here. How important and valuable is having a walk on like Colin Coyne, who's complained the post and emulate looks like that? It's, it's amazing. You know, we take great pride in trying to put together uh, our walk-ons. I mean, our coaching staff, people are probably shocked how hard and how much uh, intel we do on that. And I got a call from Bob McKellar, and he told me about Colin, and he said, I promise you, you will love having him in your program. He said, if I were to want to coach another year, I'd love for him to be here. But uh, he uh, said, you're going to love him. And from the time that he, he's gotten here, one, he's improved a lot, but he's become a huge part of this program. And the fact that he's earned the respect of, of his teammates, and we're going to miss him. I mean, you, you look at what he does, and you know, we're like uh, getting ready to a, a story about him. We're getting ready to play uh, Auburn, and uh, Janai Broom is left-handed, and we said, hey, we we got to get some moving to your left. And he went out and for days worked on shooting left-handed. And I mean, I mean, as I mean. He, takes his role so seriously and uh, you love people like that and, and again uh, he's been a, a big part of our program but we're going to miss him too just because he cares so much about his teammates and what we're trying to get done here. Rick, what kind of legacy do you think Santi and Josiah leave us? I know that he's going to still have some games here to come but you know the final home game. Well again I would say I, I think maybe the best thing is, is, is talk about a, uh, a transition they went through I think that Grant and his group laid a Laid this was the beginning of the foundation that we wanted to lay here. But those guys have certainly come in and they've uh, been pillars to uh, keep it going. I mean, uh, both of them, and they've had their ups and downs. And, you know, I, you think about it, we recruited Josiah extremely hard. I mean, as hard as maybe anybody we've recruited over a two year period. Mike Schwartz did an incredible job locking in there early when he was a, a sophomore. We recruited Santi for uh, Kim McDonald, knew some people at the NBA Academy all over about a month. And uh, he decided he was going to leave early and come. And, but uh, Joe came in with high expectations. Santi, nobody knew who he was. And, uh, but uh, they, they both got here different ways, but they're going to leave uh, the same way in the fact that, uh, again, almost like cornerstones in their time here, that they've been a, a rock that we've been able to rely on and build on. Rick, did the way Saucy started his career here tell you what you needed to know about him the way he was thrown into the game? Yeah, again, Santi, I, I remember if it were yesterday, he got here and I said, hey, give me some sets you're familiar with and we'll put them in. We got one day here and get it going because we need you. And we were doing a little bit of some things what he talked about. And, but 
I think he hit what five threes in that game, and but he was in terrible shape. He was laugh about that. You know, he was uh, really in terrible shape. But the way he, he he went from a guy that everybody said offense, 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 where he became such a complete player, he, and he didn't, he's played every spot other than what the post position. He'll guard anybody, but uh, uh, Santi's, you know, defensively. I mean, he's become one of the elite defenders in the country, and the fact that. His work ethic, he's a high level competitor. If Santi were playing checkers, he'd want to win. And, uh, but he, uh, he, he totally uh, changed. And, you know, last summer was the first summer he really spent with us because of obligations and doing other things. But uh, uh, he's totally changed what he was known as a guy that was like just a spot up shooter. And he's become so much more than that. You said in the last press conference that basketball is a game of runs against Kentucky. What kind of do you think will be the hardest part of that 40 minute run? Well, uh, they're, they're great transition. Got to keep the floor balanced because they got some guys that will leave early if, uh, because I think they got confidence in their rebounders to get the ball. And we got to take away those uh, quick hit and plays uh, segments where they can put up a lot of points quickly. And uh, But they. They got. They have some really prolific scores that can go. I look back on a game with Rob Dillingham. I mean, we we guarded him. I think as well as he could be guarded, but he just made some terrific shots. And he, they've got other guys now that have, I think, gotten confidence and are playing. And so it's going to be us really uh, understanding uh, how important every possession is going to be and being ready to do what we need to do to try to stop those runs and not letting them hit us with a lot of them. Anything else for Coach? Thank you. Thank you.